Joining me now in the studio are two of the actors who will be uh, opening the Hillbury Theatre production of the Cider House Rules Parts 1 and 2 at the Hillbury Theatre. It opens next week on Thursday, but it's in, in two parts, and there's a, there's a good reason why. But first, let me introduce Andrew Papa, who plays Homer Wells. Hello, Andrew. Hello, happy to be here. Welcome to the station. And uh, Sarah Himes, who plays Candy, and uh, she has a very important role. And we'll uh, find out more about in a moment as well. Hello. Hi there. Thanks for having us. Well, give us an idea of the scope of what, what's about to be embarked on uh, starting next week. Well, one of the things that's great about this theatrical production of the Cider House Rules is that a lot of the original narration in the book that was written by John Irving is in the text of the play. Um, a lot of times what you were talking about, sometimes when it's translated to a movie, people think, oh, I miss this about the book and I miss this about the book. Well, what's great about the play is that it includes so many of those moments and a lot more than what the movie includes. So it's, it's really a wonderful, wonderful adaptation by, adapted by Peter Parnell. And um, the, it, it, with it being in two parts, it's able to encompass so much more of the, the beautiful story that, that John Irving wrote. Yeah, um, to add to that, also, there are a couple specific character stories that happen in the book. Um, Melanie, for example, is a, is a very important character um, in the book and in the play. She, um, I know John Irving, in writing the screenplay for the movie, Melanie's story was kind of left out. He just needed to focus the movies yeah. as much as possible. Um, also, Dr. Larch, you get a lot more background in him that, that you get in the book. You, you see that in the play but you don't see that so much in the movie, so there are um, more specific kind of character developments and character stories that um, develop in the play like they do in the book. Uh, well, when we last left our hero, Homer, uh, at the end of part one, he had just left uh, his, his home. For the first time, though, he's, he's left the orphanage, which has been his home, and where he was being... Has he been mentored in, in the first half at all? He has actually, so, but, but the thing that's interesting is that his single mentor has been Dr. Larch. Right. He uh, is, there aren't very many school opportunities for him. There's a place just outside called Three Mile Falls, but he spends, mo he learns most of what he learns from Dr. Larch. So even his education, while still very uh, broad uh, in terms of his medical knowledge, you know, he's very, uh, he becomes a very accomplished midwife by his youngest, uh, 19. Um, he's, there are certain even social things that he doesn't quite understand yet and yeah. he starts to explore those and learn those in part two when he is with Candy and Wally at the at the orchard which is in Ocean View. So. Yeah and um, it, it's also explored the when Homer leaves with Wally and Candy the three of them become kind of like best friends kind of inseparable and um, when Wally signs up to join the war and that that kind of that friendship between the three of them is broken off. It kind of explores what can happen when you, you love each other so much and where do you start taking care of each other and what lines get crossed. Yeah. And um, not to give too much of it away, but um, it just sort of explores that relationships are not always as cut and dry as they appear they could be at the beginning when you're trying to take care of each other. That's a wonderful opportunity to, to explore these, uh, well, John Irving's book, first of all, stage and then of course the issues that he raises and I, I thank Andrew Papa and uh, Sarah Himes for joining me this afternoon yeah, thank you Appreciate thank you it. so much for having us look forward to seeing you on stage in the Hillbury Cider House Rules opens next week information at 313-577-2972